Welcome to a world where ordinary rules of construction and design are turned on their head, because today we're unveiling 15 of the most strange types of infrastructure in the world. Let's begin with number 15, the Exceed 4000. In the annals of architectural ingenuity, there exists a proposal that challenges conventional thinking and presents a vision that seems almost otherworldly, the Exceed 4000. This towering concept invites us to explore the frontiers of imagination and pushes the envelope of what we thought possible in the realm of skyscrapers. Proposed in the latter part of the 20th century, the Exceed 4000 is not merely a building, it's a symbol of humanity's ambition. Its height, soaring to approximately 13,000 feet, places it in a league of its own. To offer a little perspective, it reaches the stratosphere, a domain where the Earth's atmosphere begins to merge with the void of space. The design of it is nothing short of insane, resembling a monumental pyramid. Its construction necessitates the employment of cutting-edge materials and pioneering engineering methods to withstand these colossal forces and stresses experienced at such altitudes. Yet the XC4000 does transcend everything else from its time. City planners and architects always looking to take urban living to the next level, and the XC4000 could have been the one to do it. Within its colossal confines lies a self-sustaining city, a vertical ecosystem where inhabitants coexist harmoniously with the environment. Notably, its minimal land footprint is a testament to responsible urban development, and it harnesses renewable energy sources to power its multifaceted activities. It's just a shame that this visionary design never came to fruition. Number 14. Hyperloops Companies like Virgin, Tesla, and The Boring Company are looking to ease our commutes by creating hyperloops. What exactly is a hyperloop? Well, it's more or less a vacuum tube where a pod slides along a single track that's magnetized, so there's virtually no resistance. This unique engineering allows the pod to move at extremely high speeds using minimal electricity, which makes it fairly low cost to build and operate. So while the bullet trains of today travel at about 200 miles an hour and commercial airplanes cruise at 5 to 600 miles an hour, the Hyperloop is projected speeds of 7 to 800 miles per hour. And since a Hyperloop can avoid the takeoff and landing that an airplane needs to do to get to cruising altitude, it can shave additional time off the journey and create a more efficient trip. This is hopefully the preferred method of transportation for the future, even the likes of billionaire bad boy Elon Musk claiming to not only have invented the concept, but promising he can deliver one in the coming years. Eventually, Hyperloop routes could feature tunnels through hills and mountains, and possibly even undersea routes. But the catch here is that the digging and infrastructure for those routes will be as expensive as it is time-consuming, so the jury's still out as to whether these Hyperloops will ever become a reality. Number 13. The Living Root Bridges of Megalium These next bridges on our list are as gorgeous as they are perilous and remind us that sometimes being strange can be pretty cool. A living root bridge is a type of simple suspension bridge formed of living plant roots by tree shaping. They're common in the southern part of northeast Indian state of Megalium. They're handmade from the aerial roots of rubber fig trees by the indigenous groups of the mountainous terrain along the southern part of the Shillong Plateau. Most of the bridges grow on steep slopes of subtropical moist forests between 160 and 3,700 feet above sea level. As long as the tree from which it formed remains healthy, the roots in the bridge can naturally grow thick and strengthen. New roots can grow throughout the tree's life and must be pruned or manipulated to strengthen the bridge. Once mature, some bridges have as many as 50 or more people crossing and have a lifespan of several hundred years. But without proper active care, many bridges have decayed or grown wild, becoming unusable, and you won't know until you try and cross. At over 165 feet in length, the longest known example of a living root bridge is near the small town of Penursula in India. Number 12. Jigsaw Roads not just for puzzle enthusiasts, jigsaw roads are now coming to a road near you. The Dutch company KWS has teamed up with the folks at Waven and Total to develop a new plastic road that will fit together much like the pieces of a puzzle. Created from recycled plastic, the plastic road project will make prefabricated modular roadways, which are 70% faster to build. But their hollowed out design makes them four times lighter than asphalt and allows for pipes and cables to be installed without extensive digging. And while plastic is inherently bad for Mother Earth, these plastic roads are a brilliant idea. Gone would be the days of non-stop and excessive construction, tearing up the asphalt only to seal it back up again weeks later. These road designs make things better for literally everyone, and can even help people give new life to all the plastic humans are constantly throwing away. Seeing as how plastic doesn't degrade, why not use them to build a better road? 
but if these jigsaw plastic roads sound too good to be true, they underwent a relatively successful trial phase in September of 2018 with the opening of bike paths in the Netherlands. And while using these jigsaw roads may not be the most pragmatic choice for, say, a highway, they are certainly the perfect addition to smaller areas. Number 11. The Shard Moving about in the concrete jungle that is London, it's tough not to notice the Shard. This avant-garde skyscraper, designed by the illustrious architect Renzo Piano, is truly one of a kind and has been turning head for years. The Shard's design is a celebration of contemporary architecture at its finest. Its sleek, glass-clad exterior soars to a height of over a thousand feet, making it the tallest building in the United Kingdom and a distinctive presence on the London skyline. One of the most captivating features of the Shard is its unique glass facade, which appears to transform as it catches the changing light of day. The use of high-performance glass not only maximizes natural daylight within the building, but it also reduces the need for artificial lighting, contributing to its sustainability. The Shard's structural design is a masterpiece in its own right. It features a striking, irregular pyramidal shape that tapers as it ascends, giving it a dynamic and futuristic appearance. The building's core is constructed from reinforced concrete, while the facade is a curtain wall of glass panels, providing a stunning 360-degree view of London. Sure, the Shard is a skyscraper, but it's also kind of like a vertical city. Its 95 stories are divided into multiple zones, including office spaces, luxury residences, a hotel, restaurants, and public viewing gallery on the 72nd floor, known as the View from the Shard. This multifunctional approach makes it a vibrant hub of activity day and night. The Shard's commitment to sustainability is also noteworthy. It incorporates numerous green design elements, such as rainwater harvesting, energy-efficient systems, and optimal insulation. The building even has a combined heat and power plant, utilizing waste heat to generate electricity, thereby reducing its carbon footprint. Number 10. The Dyson Harrop Satellite The Dyson Harrop Satellite proposes a novel approach to meeting global energy needs by harnessing solar wind and transmitting the energy to Earth. The satellite consists of a long metal wire loop charged to create a magnetic field that captures solar wind and electrons. These electrons are directed to a receiver, generating a current and sustaining the satellite's magnetic field. Excess current powers an infrared laser aimed at a satellite dish on Earth, where energy is collected without interference from the atmosphere. The satellite recharges itself by directing unused current onto a sail, exposed to sunlight allowing it to remain in orbit and around the sun. A small Dyson Harrop satellite with specific dimensions positioned at Earth's distance from the Sun could produce 1.7 megawatts, sufficient for approximately 1,000 U.S. homes. Scaling up, a satellite with a 1-kilometer-long wire and an 8,400-kilometer sail could generate an astonishing 100 billion times the current global energy demand. Constructed of mainly copper, these satellites are considered feasible with modern technology and delivery methods. Moreover, their cost is expected to be lower than traditional solar panel projects due to the affordability of copper compared to solar panels. Despite these advantages, though, a significant challenge arises. Dyson Harrop satellites depend on the constant solar wind found high above the Earth's orbit plane. This necessitates positioning the satellite tens of millions of kilometers away, leading to a major drawback in power transmission. Over such distances, even a focused laser beam would spread to thousands of kilometers wide, rendering the power output insignificant. Number 9. The Zuhai Jinwan Offshore Wind Farm This offshore wind farm, situated off the coast of Zuhai in Guangdong Province, China, is a significant renewable energy project. Established in response to China's commitment to expanding its clean energy capacity, the wind farm marks a stride towards sustainable power generation. Wind farms, pivotal for the future of renewable energy, are emerging worldwide, including in Hong Kong. The Zuhai Jinwan Offshore Wind Farm, developed by Guangdong Yudean Zuhai Offshore Wind Company, utilizes turbines on fixed foundations. Presently generating around 729,000 megawatt hours annually, it effectively mitigates over 400,000 tons of carbon dioxide emissions per year. It's located approximately 6.5 miles south of Sanso Island in the bay, and the wind farm connects to the southern power grid featuring 55 turbine generator systems. It was initiated in late 2018. This energy group invested a substantial $850 million in this pioneering project. Now, despite global challenges, including a pandemic and adverse weather, the wind farm stands as a testament to resilience. As the largest offshore wind power project in the Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area, it plays a pivotal role in supplying the region with clean, low-carbon, secure energy. 
The wind farm features a cluster of offshore wind turbines, each standing tall with a hub height of around 365 feet and a rotor diameter of approximately 465 feet. The sheer size of these structures does contribute to their efficiency in capturing wind energy. Utilizing the principles of aerodynamics, these wind turbines convert kinetic energy from the wind into mechanical energy through the rotation of the blades. This generated electricity is transmitted to the mainland through an underwater cable network, integrating the wind farm into the regional power grid. Number 8. Gateshead Millennium Bridge The Gateshead Millennium Bridge, a pedestrian and cyclist tilt bridge spanning the River Tyne between Gateshead and Newcastle upon Tyne, holds the distinction of being the first ever tilting bridge. Operational since 2001, this award-winning structure was designed by Wilkinson Erie and engineered by Gifford. Sometimes referred to as the Blinking Eye Bridge or the Winking Eye Bridge, its unique shape and tilting method contribute to its distinct identity. Constructed to meet specific design constraints, the bridge's main features include two steel arches, one serving as a pedestrian and cycle path and the other providing support. The structure, designed for ease of operating and closing, utilizes 18 suspension cables for stability. It's powered by six hydraulic rams. This 850,000 kilogram bridge tilts as a single unit, creating clearance for river traffic. The entire rotation process takes approximately four minutes, allowing for a smooth transition from open to closed. Notably energy efficient, the bridge's operational cost per opening was as low as £3.96 in April 2017. At night, a lighting system designed by Jonathan Spears and Associates illuminates the bridge without causing any light pollution. The bridge's cables, too thin to be visible at night, contribute to that appeal. The lights display white during the week and various colors on the weekend with green and red LEDs, indicating opening and closing during the day. The bridge, lifted into position by the Asian Hercules II, one of the world's largest floating cranes, attracted crowds during its transportation in one day. Notably, the design originally incorporated fixed piles for vessel collision protection, but public discontent and unnecessary maintenance costs led to their removal in 2012. Moving on to number 7, Montaña Magica Lodge. Nestled in the dense jungles of Chile's Huelo National Reserve, the Montaña Magica Lodge is a fantastical waterfall-shaped hotel that appears to be hewn into natural stone spire, resembling the creation of ambitious hobbits. Despite its otherworldly appearance, this lodge is a man-made structure constructed using locally sourced lumber and stone. The tall cone-shaped building features water cascading down its sides, flowing between guests' windows and beneath layers of lush jungle foliage. Each cozy suite inside the lodge is named after a local bird species and is equipped with a modern amenities, comparable to those found in more urban hotels. This lodge offers more than just a unique stay. It provides additional attractions such as hot tubs crafted from enormous tree trunks situated on decks overlooking the forest. And this lodge also boasts a forest-integrated mini-golf course, utilizing the natural surroundings as obstacles. Outdoor activities like horseback riding, rafting, and hiking are also available here. Now, while the lodge itself is a marvel, its location in the Huilo Natural Reserve adds to this allure. The reserve is home to the Huilo Huilo Falls, the world's smallest deer species, Pudu, and South America's longest zipline system. Accessing this magical place requires a journey of at least two hours from the nearest airfield, a small price to pay for an experience that transports visitors to what feels like Middle Earth. The Montaña Magica Lodge, it seamlessly blends the enchanting beauty of its surroundings with the comfort of modern amenities, creating a truly unique and memorable retreat in the heart of Chile's natural wonders. Number 6. The Kawazu Nanadaru Loop Bridge the Kawazu Nanadaru Loop Bridge is located in the Izu Peninsula, Shizuoka Prefecture in Japan. It's a unique circular loop bridge that spans the Kawazu River, forming a full loop on one side, allowing vehicles to turn 360 degrees. Designed and constructed by Izu Shaboten Engineering and completed in 1980, the loop bridge stands out for its distinctive shape and purpose. The circular design serves a specific function, allowing drivers to navigate steep terrain and the sharp turn of the Kawazu River Valley more efficiently. The loop bridge has a diameter of approximately 265 feet, and its unique design allows vehicles to ascend and descend through a circular route. Constructed over four decades ago, this bridge has become a notable landmark in the region. The loop design minimizes environmental impact on the surrounding landscape, making it an eco-friendly solution to the challenges posed by the geographical features of this region. Stretching out the bridge would result in a loop with a circumference of approximately 830 feet. While not an exceptionally long bridge, its unique design and engineering make it a significant structure. 
Despite that relatively modest size, this bridge has gained attention for its innovative approach to addressing the challenges of the terrain. Travelers and engineering enthusiasts alike appreciate the bridge for its functionality, distinctive design, and seamless integration into the driving route. Number 5. The Arc de Triomphe Roundabout this roundabout, nestled at the western ends of the Champs-Élysées in Paris, is one of the most iconic and recognizable places in the world. Thanks to its chaotic nature, this roundabout never fails to leave a lasting impression. It's graced the silver screen in several movies, from action-packed car chases in Ronin to romantic strolls in Midnight in Paris. This famous intersection has set the stage for countless cinematic moments. It is kind of like a real-life movie set where even the chaos becomes art fit for the Louvre. But like any good piece of art, this roundabout can cause great suffering to anyone involved. A swirling vortex of cars, buses, and scooters, bicycles converge from 12 different avenues. Drivers don't need to know French to make it through this nexus of worlds. All they need is a lead foot, a good horn, and some well-timed assertive maneuvers to be understood. The absence of visible lane markings adds to the confusion, turning this circular maze into a tornado of traffic. But it's also not hard to marvel at the archway itself. This architectural masterpiece was commissioned by none other than Napoleon Bonaparte himself, honoring the triumphs of the French army. Construction began in 1806 and took over 30 years to complete. Today, it stands as a symbol of national pride and a tribute to French history and culture. It's also not just a traffic hub, it's a symbol of unity and a meeting point where the past converges with the present. The streets come alive here, and just like life itself, there's plenty of confusion to be had. Who in their right mind, though, would willingly partake in the anarchy of the Ark? Well, the answer lies in the allure of Paris itself. Just ask the hundreds of locals who use it to get home, to work, or even just the store, and the hundreds of thousands who flock from far and wide to catch a glimpse of the iconic set piece. Life is chaos, and so the Arc de Triomphe roundabout perfectly embodies how sometimes our day-to-day -day activities make little to no sense. Sometimes we're going around in circles to no end, but if you pay attention at the right moment, you'll find where you need to be. Number 4. The Evergreen Point Floating Bridge The Evergreen Point Floating Bridge is an odd little piece of infrastructure connecting Seattle to its eastern suburbs across Lake Washington. It offers a fascinating blend of innovation and functionality. Opened in 2016, this wonder immediately secured its place in history as both the longest and the widest floating bridge globally. Replacing its predecessor, the new Evergreen Point Floating Bridge was constructed to support Washington State Route 520. With a remarkable span of over 7,700 feet, it outstripped the previous bridge by 130 feet, earning it the distinguished title of the world's longest floating bridge. The innovative design includes 77 concrete pontoons, the largest of which measure an impressive 75 feet wide and 360 feet long. Building a bridge with massive floating chunks of concrete might seem unconventional, but each pontoon boasts a watertight compartment, diligently monitored for leaks. Beneath the lake's surface, 58 anchors secure the pontoons to the lake bed, connected by robust 3-inch thick steel cables. This structural approach addresses the challenge posed by the lake's depth, which reaches about 200 feet, with an additional 200 feet of soft silt below it. The bridge deck, perched 20 feet above the pontoons, comprises 776 precast concrete sections, creating a dual-layered structure. This design allows maintenance vehicles to traverse the lower pontoon deck accessing the main roadway above without disrupting continuous flow of traffic. Building the world's longest and widest floating bridge came at a significant cost, though, exceeding $4.5 billion in total construction expenses. However, the bridge's value is reflected in the daily passage of an average 74,000 toll-paying motorists, and its projected service life is at least 75 years. Sound Transit has ambitious plans for the Hadley Memorial Floating Bridge. They aim to introduce a first-of-its-kind light rail system, utilizing revolutionary technology at each end. This tech will allow flexible movement between the land and the bridge ends, ensuring safety of rail cars while accommodating the dynamic nature of the bridge. This forward-looking project adds another layer of innovation to an already remarkable feat of engineering. Number 3. Cybertecture Egg Cybertecture, a 21st century innovation in the field of architecture, represents the pinnacle of architectural achievement worldwide. This architectural landscape has undergone significant transformation since the 18th century, when Roman architecture took center stage globally. The evolution of architectural preferences, alongside advancements in building materials such as concrete, steel, and glass, 
has brought about a new era marked by the integration of human intelligence, technology, multimedia, and interconnectivity into structural design. At the forefront of this architectural revolution is James Law, based in Hong Kong, who conceptualized Cybertexture. As the leader of Cybertexture International, the company specializes in multimedia, interiors, and IT planning, overseeing projects encompassing 2 million square feet across major parts of Mumbai. The cyber texture building is shaped like an egg and inspired by a vessel that embodies the idea of the Earth as a self-sustaining vessel with an ecosystem that facilitates life, growth, and evolution. Located in Mumbai's central business district, the Bandra Kurla complex, the iconic cyber texture sphere serves as a beacon and a nucleus, creating a unique identity for the area. However, the introduction of cybertexture in India faced challenges outlined by James Law in an article published in the Financial Express. These challenges include unraveling the intricacies of a new concept, overcoming resistance from established developers and builders accustomed to traditional styles. Despite all these challenges, though, cybertexture-based buildings offer numerous advantages, including higher and broader performance than conventional architecture. Efficient energy use, integration of sensors to modulate systems, enhanced building security, and a fire-resistant structure. This innovative approach results in a significant reduction in construction usage, approximately 15% less than conventional buildings. The Cybertexture Egg, a 13-story building spanning 350,000 square feet of office space with three levels of basement and a 400-car parking capacity, showcases additional sustainable features. These include a cantilever designed to minimize heat gain, green spillouts, also known as sky gardens, for oxygen replenishment and refuge areas. An underground cooling system, solar panels integrated into the intelligent glass facade for alternative electricity, and water recycling systems for sewage treatment, rainwater harvesting, and wetland cell systems. Number 2. The Shimizu Mega City Pyramid Shimizu Mega City Pyramid. What is there to really say about this one? Well, actually a lot. This proposed skyscraper is absolutely nuts, but if it's completed, it would go down as one of the coolest buildings in the world. It would sit in Tokyo Bay and would be an enormous self-sustaining pyramid full of businesses and office buildings, parks, homes, and everything else you need for a megacity. If everything goes to plan, architects will use five trusses stacked on top of each other to build this 6,500-foot-tall beast. Tokyo is one of the most populated cities in the world, and if you live there or have even only visited, you'll know the feeling of being on top of one another but the Shimizu Mega City Pyramid would help to alleviate that feeling by creating more space. It may only be able to accommodate just a small fraction of the population, with a capacity for about a million people, but any bit does help. So why haven't they started work on this thing yet? Well, current technology hasn't quite caught up to the idea just yet. The structure is far too large to be built using current conventional methods. Folks are banking on the development of super-strong yet lightweight materials made of carbon nanotubes and graphene, both of which are already in their respective research phase. The teams behind this megacity have said they would love to start construction in 2030, but as of yet, that's still just a dream. And even if that dream does come true, though, it will cost an estimated $600 billion. The Shimizu Corporation behind this outlandish skyscraper pyramid hybrid is hoping to have the project completed by 2110 at the earliest. So, when it's completed, this pyramid will be the largest man-made structure on the planet, but it's highly unlikely that anyone alive today will be able to see the finished product. Number 1. The Orbital Ring The concept of an orbital ring represents a visionary approach to space infrastructure involving the creation of an artificial ring placed around a celestial body, such as the Earth. This ring rotates at a speed that generates centrifugal force, effectively counteracting the force of gravity. The potential applications of an orbital ring are diverse, ranging from serving as a space station to enabling high-speed transportation or space launches. To achieve the required rotation speed, though, the orbital ring must surpass the typical low-Earth orbit velocity of 8 kilometers a second, reaching approximately 10 kilometers a second for Earth. The structure's unique feature lies in its ability to resist bending due to the net outward force generated by the rotation, supported by internal tension within a cable. This tension would allow the orbital ring to carry loads, making it a versatile platform for various purposes. One of those purposes involves the creation of a space elevator above Earth's equator. A motorized platform placed on the cable moves in the opposite direction at a speed that makes it appear stationary from the ground. This platform, running at 9.5 kilometers a second, facilitates the lowering of a cable from a space elevator. 
Unlike a traditional space elevator that would require extensive lengths of cable, this orbital ring-based elevator can be constructed with existing materials, making it a far more feasible option. Despite the practical challenges of constructing a planet-sized cable in low Earth orbit and accelerating it to a faster-than-orbital velocity, alternative architectures have been proposed to address those limitations. Examples include the launch loop, a partial ring between ground stations, the partial ring using separate objects controlled magnetically, the space fountain, a vertical version of the particle ring acting as a space elevator, and the tethered ring, a dynamic structure built on the planet's surface with a continuous non-orbiting ring. Soviet inventor Anatoly Unitsky proposed an electromagnetic track encircling Earth known as the String Transportation System, wherein centrifugal forces detach the string from the Earth's surface, lifting the ring into space when its velocity exceeds 10 kilometers a second. Recent contributions from Andrew Muhlenberg and his students emphasize the potential of low-Earth orbital rings as humanity's stepping stones into space. Applications include communication via a fiber-optic ring, surface-to-orbit transport using a sling-on-a-ring system, space-based solar power, and climate change mitigation with a space sunshade. That sling-on-a-ring system involves rotating slings made of colossal carbon tubes, dipping them into the atmosphere to pick up payloads from conventional aircraft flying at altitudes of 13 to 15 kilometers. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you next time. Thank you to our channel members.